Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Journey Across the Galaxy. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, potential changes to our journey. Just wanted to throw some ideas out there. Uh, but before we get to that, let's go ahead, get off the ground, and do our little intro for those of you who may be joining the series just now and have no idea what's going on. Uh, we are currently on our way out to Beagle Point, working to uh, get our exobiology rank. Oops, hold on. There we go. Working to get our exobiology rank up into the elite status as well as make enough money to buy a fleet carrier and hopefully take up permanent residence out in the black. Um, as we go, we are trying to stop off at various systems to find a cool living species uh, to scan and collect data on. We currently have what I estimate to be a really, really large amount of money sitting in our data banks, which is why I'm coming, which is why I'm. Uh, which is why I have the topic of discussion that I have today. But before, I, I don't want to get into that subject until we actually get uh, past the intro section here. So let's try to get around the planet here and get ourselves to where we can start jumping into the next system. And then we'll go through the sequence of events that we do as we're traveling along towards our destination. And away we go. <clears throat> Right, just waiting for the frame shift drive to charge and off we go to the next system. So as we uh, travel along through all of this, we hop into the system, we will pop the discovery scanner, which allows us to see how many bodies are in the system. And then uh, we'll do a fuel scoop operation to refill our tanks and make sure that we have enough fuel to keep on going with our journey. And then after that, well, let's go ahead and just do those things now since we're already in the system. We're popping that discovery channel, uh, discovery channel. <laughs> discovery scanner you can see there are 19 bodies in this system so uh we're doing our fuel scooping operation and now we're done with that we're going to come to a, a minimal throttle so we can check the full spectrum system scanner to see if there are any high value planets we're looking for earth-like worlds if you look down there in the bottom right ammonia worlds or water worlds there don't happen to be any in this system uh, I typically have a limit of 15 bodies in a system uh, to do what we're doing right now, but uh, I'm feeling a little bit uh, I'm feeling a little bit fudgy right now. We'll go ahead and just do it since it's only a few more bodies than we typically would say. Go ahead and right now, if you're looking up at the top right corner of the screen, you can see features. We're looking to see biological, and we want to see at least two different species on a planet. Okay, so there's one there. It's a good sign, which means we may find a planet that actually has two. Or we may just find a bunch of them and just have one. That happens a lot, too. Okay, another single biology planet. Uh, still on that one. Uh, these are all really far away anyway, so there's no point in continuing. Uh, sorry, let me let me show you why that is. Let's see, where were all those bodies? Mm -hmm. uh, if you look over there on the left side of the screen at the bottom of the little meter there, it says distance, 124,000 light seconds. That's going to take a very long time to do in Super Cruise. So we're just going to go ahead and move on to the next system because all the biology was over in that over in that really far away spot. Uh, we currently have 189 jumps until our next waypoint. Uh, once we hop into the next system, we'll, do, we'll look at the system map so you guys can see where we are and where we're going because I forgot to do that at the beginning of the intro. <laughs> I'm having a little bit of a space out, uh, space cadet uh, day today. Not sure why, but we'll get into the system. We'll pop the discovery scanner, and as we're doing our fuel scoop operation, we'll check the galaxy map so you guys can see where we're going. So eventually we'll get there. There we go. Discovery scanner, fuel scoop the star. There we go. All right, so we are currently right here. And we started way back over here in the bubble where Earth and all of human civilization is. Made our way through the center of the galaxy where Sagittarius A star is, the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. And we are currently in this almost outermost sector over here. Our current waypoint is over here and Beagle Point is over in this area. So we have our we have a uh, pretty decent, um, a pretty decently close waypoint that's going to get us relatively close to Beagle Point. And then after that, we're going to start having to figure out uh, what jumps we're going to have to do to actually make it all the way there because, you know, the, the distances between the stars out that far are pretty extreme and the route planner has a hard time figuring out how to get you there. So there's two geolo or there's a geological signature on that planet. Let's see, we got geological there. 
Not looking for geologicals, though. We are looking for biologicals. So let's just keep on looking at these bodies here and see if maybe we can get lucky and find a decent biological. Um, and then we can start talking about the actual subject for today, which is going to be talking about maybe changing up our plan uh, quite a bit, honestly. Uh, but I want to get some feedback before we make any of those kinds of decisions. Because, uh, you know, this uh, this journey, I believe, has become important to some of you guys. Uh, maybe more than it's become important to me. So I don't want to make any decisions and disappoint people. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I have some thoughts in my head about where we might uh, make some changes in our journey. Just because, you know, I'm not really sure what the priority should be. So let's finish scanning these and then we'll start some more. So it seems like it's going to be all geological, unfortunately. All right, so there's nothing here. All right, moving on to the next system. Uh, so, like I said, the topic of today is going to be talking about our uh, our potential just our potential choices with our journey moving forward. So, Beagle Point was more of kind of a throwaway, or not a throwaway, but just kind of a spur of the moment. Hey, we made it to the center of the galaxy. Maybe we should go on to Beagle Point. Um, the goal, so, and let me be very clear, the goal of this journey was not for me to go to Beagle Point. I've been to Beagle Point a couple of times, so for me personally, that's not a goal that is super important to me. The important goal to me was to increase our uh, exobiology rank um, to elite status, and then as we were doing all of that, uh, we kind of added the goal of, of potentially, you know, buying a fleet carrier and maybe starting a maybe starting a new type of journey out there with the fleet carrier. So for me, those are the important goals that we're working towards right now. Beagle Point was just kind of a, nah, that would be kind of cool to do, uh, do for the channel. Uh, there's nothing special in Beagle Point. It, you know, it, it was the destination for a journey a long time ago, and that's why it's such a major thing. Uh, we're not gonna see anything spectacular there. It's just, it's, a, it's an explorer's check mark kind of thing. So, uh, I, was, I, I tell you all of that, not because I've made a decision, but because that's kind of where my thought process is as far as do we want to continue on and go all the way to Beagle Point, or do we want to maybe start turning around and heading back towards the bubble so we can expedite our fleet carrier operation. So that, like I said, is not really a dis like if nobody says anything, I'm probably going to turn around because I, I just somebody made somebody made a point of letting of reminding me that you know at least as far as i'm aware fleet carriers and that's all that's going to be out there i don't remember there i don't remember if there's a state all right here's it all right i guess that, that's the other thing uh please let me know if there is a station out at beagle point or if it's all fleet carriers because i don't remember the last time i went out there i know i docked at something but i don't remember what it was and if all that's out there are fleet carriers and if fleet carriers impose that uh, very steep uh, fee for turn for turning in data well you know if we have billions and if we have billions in credits worth of information and we lose say 25 percent of that that is a massive hit that is a very very massive hit oh we got a biological source there so um my personal thought is maybe we should just go ahead turn around and do some grinding all the way back to the bubble sell off our data for full sell off our data for for full price get ourselves into a fleet carrier and then come back for a separate journey in the fleet carrier and take the fleet carrier all the way out to beagle point so i don't know like i said i haven't made a decision yet um in my mind this journey has enough of a following well i don't know I don't know how much of a following it really has, to be perfectly honest with you. It gets a lot of views, but um, there's only so many of you that actively participate in talking about the journey. So I'm not really sure how many people are actually following it. So, but those of you who do, you know, I value your opinion and I want to make sure that I'm providing content that you guys are finding valuable. So if it's important for you, for us to go all the way out to Beagle Point, because, you know, you think it's an important goal for us to do for the channel. Okay, uh, I'm totally fine with that. We can continue on as we are. On the other hand, if you agree, well, hold on, let's make sure we're stopping and checking to see if there's any high value planets. We have a gas giant there. That is not a high value planet. We're gonna move on. Uh, however, if you're like me and the goal is to get into a fleet carrier, 
um, as not not necessarily as quickly as possible but just in a more expedited manner then you know let me know in the comments and we can turn around and start heading back in as quick a manner as we can towards the bubble because if we continue on with this journey as we are right now we still have hundreds of jumps to complete and each of these episodes is really only getting us even if we're just focusing on jumping we're only getting you know 10 to 20 jumps in per episode it's still going to be a couple months probably before we make it to beagle points if we continue on at the pace that we've been going um whereas if we turn around i'm willing to sit down over a couple of days and just grind out going all the way back to the bubble <laughs> so you know we can go back figure out how much money we've made and see you know how close we are to maybe being able to just buy that fleet carrier and start our start the next phase of our exploration journey now like i said um, I don't have a strong, super strong opinion about that because for me, this journey has always been about um, sharing or, or doing something with you guys. It's not so much that I need, I have a desire or a goal that I'm really trying to reach other than, you know, I said in the beginning, I originally started this series as a, you know, I, I logged back in over Christmas to get my free annual arcs for Christmas or whatever. And I, I figure, well, since I have the game installed, I might as well start a, I might as well start a series for my channel because there's no point in me logging in every day and not actually doing anything with it. And it turned out that enough people wanted to watch that journey that uh, we we turned it into a full-on series, and we've been continuing for the last several months. Um, so, realistically, I don't. My my goal isn't to hurry up and get to a fleet carrier. I mean, there's an impatience in my in my soul that's there because you know. There's a goal and I want to reach it, and I want to reach it in a timely manner. But at the same time, my ultimate, ultimate goal outside of Beagle Point or exploration or exobiology or any of that stuff is just to, you know, have a series that you guys enjoy watching and you feel a need to come back to. Because, you know, if, if we're running a YouTube channel here, it's all about the views and watch time and ideally making some money, right? So my goal is to provide what you guys, what entertains you guys, because that's what, that's what YouTube is all about, entertainment, right? So, like I said, um, my personal decision, if nobody cares, is I think we're probably just going to turn around and book it back to the bubble, see how much money we have, and then, you know, if we have what we need to buy the fleet carrier, we'll buy the fleet carrier, and if we don't, we'll just do a bunch of exploration around the bubble until we get it. On the other hand, if you guys have a strong opinion about, you know, no, we need to go, we need to get to Beagle Point. We started this journey, we're going to finish it. Okay, uh, I'm cool with that too. I'm not, uh, my, my goal is to make sure that this series is something that you guys want to watch. And if, uh, you know, abandoning the journey is going to severely disappoint you, I understand. <laughs> I'm just letting you guys know that I personally won't be severely disappointed if we decide, hey, let's just, uh, let's just get back to the bubble and get a fleet carrier already. <laughs> Because I've already been to Beagle Point twice, and it's not exactly, you know, like, for me personally, it's not going to be a big rush to get there. It's going to be, a, oh, we're back here again. <laughs> so, and uh, there's nothing special. It's not like the supermassive black hole that we visited at Sagittarius A-Star, where there's a really cool visual effect or anything like that. It's just, uh, it's just, it was the furthest you could go at one point before, you know, a lot of the engineering and stuff. I think that's, I think that's what it was. I think it, there was a, there was a time in the game where that's the furthest you could get. It was the furthest point in the galaxy that you could reach with the limitations of uh, jump technology that was in the game at the time. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. There was some kind of expedition that went out there because of that. I haven't researched the history of it. I don't know offhand what the uh, Beagle Point thing was, other than they did a really big exploration exp expedition out there at some point, and that's why it's kind of a mi uh, it's why it's kind of an exploration milestone for those of you for those for those people who are like getting into exploration. It's one of the big, you know, check this off the lists if you want to call yourself a serious explorer kind of things. Uh, is this a okay? No biology there. Just checking to see if there's any biological signatures here. Uh, but yeah, I, I say it because, you know, we've been doing this series for, we've been doing this series de since December, and, you know, we're, we're, a, we're a very long way into the journey, and we only have, you know, maybe a quarter of the distance left to go, but at the same time, that's a significant amount of distance, it's another month or so before we're going to reach there, and if you guys are fine waiting for that, then cool. Um, 
if you're like me and you're kind of ready to move on to the next step, then uh, I'm totally on board with that. I'm totally on board with that too. So that's my proposal. Um, I'm also just thinking that, you know, because if we go to Beagle Point and if we go to Beagle Point, I'm going to play it safe and sell our data there. And, you know, we're probably going to lose. I mean, and that's assuming I've, I've heard a couple of different things. I've heard that a that uh, for whatever reason, the exobiology stuff doesn't take a does it doesn't lose a percentage. I've heard some some people have told me that and other people and other people have told me that we're going to lose 25 percent on that trade. And I'm like, ooh, well, if we have 10 billion credits worth of data in our uh, I mean, I'm not, I don't. I have absolutely no idea how much we have, but if if we have say 10 billion credits worth of data sitting in our databanks right now, and we lose 25% of that, yeah, we'll technically have enough to get a fleet carrier and probably you know outfit it and all of that. But I'd rather have that extra three billion. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying, you know, that's that's a lot of credits to lose. Um, it's a lot of credits to lose because I want to play it safe and um, you know. I think uh, I think it just makes I think it just makes sense to uh, <laughs> wait till we get back to the bubble to sell all of that, so we're not losing an insane amount of credits to uh, commission fees and stuff. I don't think we can get that one, so we'll just keep swinging around this way. But if that is a faulty assumption, if that if that is a faulty assumption, if we get full credits for whatever reason because biological data has been excluded from the commission fees, I don't see why that would be the case. But if that's the case, then you know that obviously alters the decision making process a little bit. All right, I only saw one planet with a single biology. We're going to go ahead and continue on to the next system. So uh, you know, I'm going to give you guys a reasonable amount of time, a few you know a few days at least to, to uh, weigh in on the topic. Let me know what you guys think. Um, should we be prioritizing getting to our fleet carrier? Uh, keep in mind, once we get the fleet carrier set up, uh, you guys will be able to tag along for that journey if you would like. Uh, we can set up a little expedition where you guys can use the fleet carrier as a base of operations as we move around the galaxy. Uh, so, you know, another reason why maybe pushing that forward would be good because it would help you guys uh, be a little bit more involved and participate in the journey. Uh, and I'm certainly fine with uh, taking the carrier out to Beagle Point once we're done, because at that point, we're all going together. I think that would be kind of cool. Especially for those of you who, uh, you know, maybe don't want to do the journey all by yourself, but you still want to go to Beagle Point and experience that. Have, you know, be able to check that off your list. We can all do that kind of together. So, like I said, I'm, I'm fine for whatever you guys want, if you have strong opinions about it, because as far as I'm concerned, I've been to Beagle Point. I don't have a strong desire to go there again, but I understand if you guys have that completionist mentality where, you know, we started the journey, we need to finish the journey. So you guys let me know what you think. I'm, I'm indifferent either way. As long as you guys are content to continue watching the journey, I'm content to do whichever path you guys decide you want to go on. All right. 17 bodies in this system. So we'll go ahead and do another scan for here. It'd be nice if we could find some decent biology here at the end. Here at the here towards the end of this episode. It'd be a nice little cap off of the several jumps that we've gotten done. I'm trying to Seems like all of this is ice stuff though. Doo -doo -doo. Which means if we find any biology, it's gonna be Fonticula, which is not bad. Some of them can be very interesting to look at. It's all ice worlds so far. Got some, yeah, more icy bodies, it seems like. Uh, oh, there's another there's another gas giant somewhere that has a, uh, that'll have moons around it, and that's what we're looking for. That's what all that means. Okay. I really need to sit down and start learning about uh, some of the life conditions when it comes to this stuff, because I'm sh uh, a couple of you have commented and let it, and let me know that uh, you know certain systems will have certain conditions that are much more likely to produce uh, biological signatures, and I would I really need to sit down and start looking at that stuff so I can figure out you know is it worth sitting down and scanning this system, not just with how many bodies there are, but just are there any bodies that are reasonably within the 
the parameters of actually having something on it rather than, oh, there's 15 bodies in the system. Let's scan it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is is that this journey is getting very long in the tooth, and that's why I'm starting to. Oh, I think the I think the biggest thing that just kind of sparked the the sparked my the idea of potentially cutting this journey short, turning around now, and, and getting back to the bubble as quickly as possible was just, you know, uh, one of the viewers mentioned, "Hey, you're gonna lose 25 percent on that fleet carrier deal," and I'm like, "Ugh." But, like I don't know how much we have, but I'm sure we have quite a lot, and losing 25 percent of that is going to be a massive hit. Truly a massive hit. So, I don't know. Now, if I'm if my memory is incorrect and there isn't a station out there, well then, that's a different thing. There was a sta- I better be safe. Uh, play, better play it safe, I'm sorry. I don't wanna, we've had this issue where the line didn't show up and then we ran into the star. Don't want that happening again. All right, let's get this system scanned. I think at this point, though, if there are no biological sources, we're going to go ahead and find a planet to land on. Because we don't know when the next... Oh, there's geological there. We don't know when the next uh, system with landable planets is going to be. Because what ends up happening is, is if we don't take advantage of it right around... We, right around ooh, there we go. We're going to land anyway. Uh, if we don't take advantage of planets or of uh, systems that have a, uh, a reasonable number of bodies, what ends up happening because of the luck that I have is we end up having to go six or seven more systems because all we get are like stars and stuff. <laughs> so we, uh, we've, we've learned over time to take advantage of systems when they're when they're right there in the in the uh, parameters that you want in the time period that is getting towards the end. Because if you don't, you end up getting stuck going longer than you really wanted to. So that's that's my philosophy anyway. All right, looks like we have one more body to grab, and then we'll go get that biological source. All right, cool. So we'll head over to head over to this guy over here. Get that. Uh, yep. Get this one. Get a detailed surface scan on this guy, and uh, see what we have to go with there. But I'm gonna go ahead and put a cut in here because it's gonna take us a minute to get there. All right, we're approaching the body. We're gonna get ourselves lined up with this, pop a few probes on it, see what biology might be down there, and then we'll go do some scanning and close out the episode for the day. So we just need to get close enough to where that surface scanner over there on the left side of the screen changes to say too fast. That'll in indicate that we're in range. We'll slow down, fire off some probes, and find out what we have down there. It's probably going to be Fonticula. I don't know. I'm not. I didn't. I wasn't paying attention to what kind of body that this is. It doesn't look like an ice world, so it might not be. I waited a little bit longer than I probably should have, but that's okay. We only need four probes for this particular system, or for this particular body, to get the efficiency bonus. If you look down there at the bottom right, it says efficiency target is four probes, and that means if we fire four probes or less, we get extra money. I'm not sure why, uh, but we do. They, I guess they just they decided they needed some kind of mini game bonus for not just wasting a bunch of probes. Bacterium and fonticula, exactly what we were expecting. So let's go ahead. We'll get down to the surface of the planet, get ourselves scanning some mushrooms because that's what the fonticula is. Some interesting space mushrooms. <laughs> all right, so they're all over the place down here. Shouldn't be too big of a deal for us to get down to the planet. Find them relatively quickly, scan a few of them. Uh, typically on these ice planets, I have a harder time finding the bacterium because they tend to be the same color as the ground. So I'm not uh, I'm not necessarily too worried about whatever bacteria is gonna be down here. It's almost never super valuable, especially, especially on these ice planets. So uh, we'll just get down as quickly as we can, get our scans done and uh, call it a day, I think. Uh, we do tend to find back, uh, we do tend to find a lot of the fonticula here in the craters, so we're definitely going to focus our attention there. Glide down into the crater as best we can. We'll get our night vision turned on because it'll make the outlines of the fonticula stand out a little bit more, even though it's daytime. Get our landing gear down. Uh, seems like this crater doesn't have too much in the way of flat spots so this may have been a bad idea but as you can we can already see the fonticula is right there in front of us 
the night vision really does help out with making those kinds of things stick out like a sore thumb, especially when they have weird shapes like this. Looks like we got a little bit lucky with the landing spot here, so that's good. We'll scan this guy, hop up, and probably just exit the crater because it doesn't seem like we're going to have uh, too much room to maneuver, uh, too much room for landing anyways as if, if we stay here in the crater. So let's get this done as quickly as we can. First footfall, that adds a little bit more money because nobody's ever been here before. Fonticula campestris amethyst. I like the word amethyst and I like the color amethyst. I think amethyst is a cool color. Of the various dragons, chromatic dragons that were out there in Dungeons and Dragons, amethyst was my bet, was my favorite. Let's see. Which is kind of funny because it's my wife's favorite too. <laughs> But she likes it because of the uh, she likes it because of the color. I like it because the breath weapon of the amethyst dragon is a, a, a force a force weapon or a force a force breath. I think that's kind of cool. Excellent, allowed us to land. So we'll grab these guys here. Then we'll hop up out of the crater and try to grab one more set. Okay. Up and away we go. Find one more set of the Amethyst Fonticula here. These guys right here should be just fine if there's a flat spot right on the other side of this. Uh, but uh, but these guys over here are fine too. Yep, right here. All right. We'll grab these guys. I don't know that I've seen... Well, we, we need to fly around a little bit, little bit outside of the craters because you almost never find bacteria out uh, inside of the craters. So we'll, we'll fly around for a second to see if maybe we can see the bacteria. And um, we'll use a little trick with the night vision for that too. The bacteria doesn't show up with the night vision, but it is also the only thing that doesn't get highlighted with the night vision. Uh, differences on the... Different textures on the ground do end up sometimes getting highlighted so sometimes it can actually make it easier to find the bacteria with the night vision on because you'll see a patch of ground that doesn't have any night vision that just looks kind of weird looks very textured and it can help you find the bacteria when you do that so what is this over here is that a mountain um, I think we're going to go take a look at that, actually. As, as interesting, as nice as it would be to get more uh, more money from the bacteria, I actually kind of want to go look at this mountain real quick, because it just, it's just standing over here for no reason. Helps. It would help to leave the, have the throttle full, full blast. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to super slow us down if we're... Well, I don't know. This thing's really far away. It must be a very big mountain if it's taking us this long to get to it. Yeah, it's definitely in the more frozen part of the planet. Kind of weird to have this just lone mountain standing up over here. It seems like a good place to end the episode. So, uh, yeah, I think we will go ahead and call it here. Hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button if you did so that the YouTube algorithm will know and send the video out to as many people as possible. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so now so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your feed and you will be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do get early access to all of my content, so be sure to click that Join button, check out the list of options available there, and decide if any of those are right for you. If you're not interested in a continuing commitment, uh, you can leave YouTube's form of a tip with that Thanks button. It is a single contribution. Uh, direct contributions such as these are greatly appreciated and a critical component to helping to turn this into a full-time gig, which is the dream. So again, thank you very much for your time. Hope you guys have been enjoying the journey. Be sure to leave your feedback about the ideas for the future, and I will see you for the next one.